Uh, our uh, speaker tonight is an old. Uh, <laughs> visitor to our meetings too, uh, formerly the uh, curator of invertebrate paleontology at the museum. Uh, he was lucky enough to be there when the move was made from uh, Gilbert Avenue over to uh, the present location on Guest Street. And uh, Turns out, I think he left while everything was basically unpacked. <laughs> I have a feeling that's possibly why he left, although he says it was because of his wife was at the University of Tennessee, where he is now uh, a professor. And uh, his uh, specialty, and he is uh, an expert in this area, is echinoderms, particularly uh, uh, crinoids and edrios. And, uh, Last week, we talked about, we had a kind of derms, uh, talked about those, and uh, this week we're going to get another dose, only this week from the uh, Cambrian, Dr. Cullen Summerall. Thank you. 
And that's my favorite fossil in the whole world. <laughs> if you want to see it, Brenda will hit me for this, but if you want to see it, Brenda's got it. It's an Edrio asteroid attached to a crinoid stem. It's very cool. Now, the basic fundamental dichotomy in all of Edrio asteroids, and something that's been puzzling for many, many years, is there's two fundamentally different ways that the ambulacra are constructed. In the group called Edrio Aster Ids, the ambulacra are floored by pieces that alternate right and left all the way down. <coughs> In the group that are called isorophids, they stack like this. This is called biserial, and this would be uniserial. Okay? In Edrio Aster Ids, there are pores in those flooring plates or little things called tube feet to come out, and in isorophids, these have not been identified. And in Ebrio aster ids, these floor plates can be seen from the outside of the animal, where in isorophids, they are strictly internal. Now, when you're trying to reconcile all these things, what you'll discover is that if they don't jive with one another. And one of the great questions that I've been addressing is how do we reconcile these differences? So here's an Ebrio Aster kid. It's the same one we saw before. This angle is awesome. Anyway, these are the floor plates you can see on the outside. And these little plates here roof the floor, the floor plates, and those are called the cover plates. If you look here, where the cover plates are stripped away, you see the pores. Okay? So that's the way those are constructed. You note they're really, really wide. Oh, here's a blow up of the same. You see? Those are the pores. Okay? So if you chop one of these things in half, that's what they look like. Here's the floor plates in red, and then the cover plates are in blue, and the pore I've just represented by that little line thing. Now in isorophids, it's fundamentally different. The ambulacra are very, very narrow. Note, you can't see the floor plates here. All you can see are the cover plates. From the inside, the floor plates are a single uni series right here. And where they're stripped away, you can see that the, the cover plates extend up quite far beyond them. Okay? So that's what these look like in cross section. Small uni serial floor plates in red, and long cover plates in blue that sort of sit on top and teeter totter. Now, people have batted around a few ideas, and what most people have suggested is some type of a fusion model. Okay, so, so the basic idea here is a primitive Edrio aster id type might look like this. They then somehow magically align themselves like this, fuse together, and then the cover plates stretch out. You can transform one into another. Now this is conceivable. This is what people have been saying for years. But the question is, is there any fossil evidence that this actually happens? Then all of a sudden, the strangest thing happened. Material started to come from China. A huge population of Ebrio asteroids are coming out of the Middle Cambrian of China, and these Ebrio asteroids are bizarre. Now, you look at that, when you look at that, you say, oh, it looks like what he was just showing. When I look at that, I go, what on earth is that thing? The hydropore is all messed up. The cover plates are all messed up. The ambulacra are all, all messed up. Everything about this is wrong but it is still an Edrio asteroid. And there's lots of these things, and they're big, too. Some of them are upwards of this size. Wow. All of these Ten things of these size. are actually not fossils. These are pieces of rubber. They're all cast in latex, and then photographed the latex uh, cast. <coughs> Here's another one. Look at the amazing details here. That's the hydropore and gonopore as separate pyramids. No Ebrios have this. This is crazy. You'll have to trust me on that. 
and that's sort of what the mouth looks like. Just a mess. Okay. Now the other thing that, that moldix fossils give us, that fossils preserved in the normal fashion don't, is we get to see not only the outside, but also the inside. Now I just recently had a French colleague come over and visit me, a guy named Patron Le Fib or something. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what fascinated him was Irish, when we brought him to the museum, he wanted to look at Enochlura. And he held it in his hand like this, and he said, 